Kundalini. An Occult Experience by George Sidney Ariadale. Chapter 4 Kundalini Active Everywhere. Take it that Kundalini is more or less active in all life. It is the fire of life, and therefore flows through all. But it may flow either as a gentle stream, simply vitalizing, or it may be directed into special channels and become a raging torrent, let us hope subordinated to great purpose, so that the raging is a purposeful, disciplined raging though a raging nonetheless. Kundalini flows in mineral, vegetable, animal and human kingdoms, in ascending degrees of vitality, but, except in rare cases, as a gentle, fructifying stream of fire, bathing as it were the whole of the vehicle each time, however, a distinct and definite advance takes place in spiritual growth, an intensification of Kundalini occurs, becoming particularly marked, though still generalized, in connection with the various stages leading to the path and on the path itself. 1. Relationship to a master makes a marked difference in the virility of the flow, while entry into his consciousness, which takes place at the accepted stage of discipleship, means the beginning of the definite, but still informal, harnessing of Kundalini to specific purposes. Through the general influence of the Kundalini of the Master working on that of the Apprentice. One of the reasons why the Master needs to be careful about admitting an Apprentice to this close relationship of accepted discipleship is this increased stimulation of Kundalini, even though it still remains general. The relation of sonship is yet a further stimulation, while entry into the great brotherhood, too, is the beginning of the link between the kundalini of the individual and that of the brotherhood as a whole. It must be remembered that the great white lodge is itself an individual, a specialized individual consciousness with functions differentiated according to the various lines of its constituent parts. These differentiated functions may be regarded as the spiritual counterparts on an exalted scale of the various centers of the physical body. The mighty force of the Kundalini of the Brotherhood flows through these centers and through each member so that admission to the brotherhood involves participation in this great flow, the gradual uniting of the consciousness of the individual with the consciousness of the brotherhood as a whole, involving a progressive uniting of the two kundalinis. The kundalini of the individual begins to enter the stream of the brotherhood kundalini. The converse process has, however, also to take place the gradual entry of the Brotherhood Kundalini into the system of the individual, not merely in a general way, but highly specialized. I wonder whether, for the sake of accuracy, I ought not to speak of these more definite stages in the growth of Kundalini as the conscious directing of the force, rather than as an awakening. Wherever there is life, there is Kundalini more or less awake, and awakening. But the conscious direction and handling of its power is another matter altogether. 
One of the specially interesting effects of Kundalini is the intensification of the sense of unity to which its active stimulation gives rise. A breaker down of barriers between the various layers and states of consciousness, it is also the breaker of barriers between the individual himself and the larger self without. The definite stimulation of Kundalini intensifies, for example, the individual consciousness of unity with the great consciousness of the brotherhood as a whole. Through the operation of the Kundalini power the separated self begins to lose its illusion of separateness. The consciousness of the individual member of the brotherhood is, of course, blended with that of the brotherhood by very reason of his membership, but in many ways the blending is implicit rather than explicit, though explicitness grows with use of the brotherhood power. But explicitness is very greatly hastened by the development of Kundalini, which works like the Theosophical Society in its first object, for it bridges all distinctions of plane and consciousness. Entry into the Theosophical Society very definitely affects a general though probably in the vast majority of members no specific stimulation of Kundalini. The Kundalini in the individual is definitely stirred, and its intensity augmented, for the society, strange as it may seem, is a definite organism, and has its own mode of Kundalini. In some cases the stimulation proves too much to bear. The Theosophical Society inevitably attracts a few people who are somewhat unbalanced, just as it attracts the pioneer and those who have freed themselves from the ordinary conventional fetters. The Theosophical Society must ever be, to a certain extent, for people who are different, whether in one way or in another. Those who are different, because lacking in ordinary self-control, will probably find the stimulation more than they can bear. They are on the whole unlikely to grow better, and may quite likely grow worse. Those who are different because they have transcended ordinary limitations will benefit enormously. There are, however, more in whom there is a latent weakness, which the stirred Kundalini will intensify just as much as it will intensify a quality. Kundalini is power power which can be used for good or ill. The weakness grows, the individual, of course, all the time regarding himself as the sole repository of truth and common sense. The strain grows to breaking point, and the blessing conferred by membership of the society, turned by uncontrolled weakness into a curse is mercifully withdrawn through the removal of the individual from membership, doubtless in a cloud of self-righteousness from his standpoint, though in sadness from the standpoint of the elder brethren. The society is naturally condemned in the particular way most conducive to the individual's self-satisfaction. In nine cases out of ten, it is pride which precedes the fall, and pride never knows itself as pride, or it would very properly commit suicide, as indeed it does in the case of common sense people. Yet the society goes on, grows in favor with the hierarchy, increases in strength and usefulness. 
that which I have written regarding the Theosophical Society is no less true in the case of other movements directly focusing upon the world the forces of light in opposition to those of darkness. The facts are observed in connection with the Theosophical Society but they are equally observable in very many other organizations, though to a lesser extent in most cases. 1. By the path I refer to that short cut up the mountain side of evolution whereby an individual, who has the necessary detachment from present circumstances and an adequate grasp of essential truth, may compress into a comparatively few lives the growth which ordinarily takes a century and more of incarnations. Mr. Lloyd George, the British statesman, said during the war that the world was traversing in a few years the distance which ordinarily it would take centuries to achieve. It is also possible to traverse in a few lives the spiritual distance which it would ordinarily take possibly thousands of years to achieve. But the help of a master is needed, of one who himself has achieved, has taken the short cut up the mountain side. Such an elder brother may from time to time apprentice to himself persons who show signs of being capable of enduring the hardships attendant on the heavy climb by ships which more often than not cause the would-be climber to decide to revert to the longer and easier route. 2. The Great Brotherhood, or Great White Lodge consists in part of those highly evolved souls who have reached that stage of the evolutionary pathway which gives them membership of what is called in occult literature the inner government of the world, and in part of those who, though far off from such a stage, are nevertheless sufficiently advanced to be trained to become members of this government compared with which all outer governments are but toy governments, in the future. Membership of the Great Brotherhood, or Great White Lodge, is open to the very earnest and faithful worker who has begun to know the nature and purpose of life. But he stands on the lowest rungs of the great ladder of the inner life is but a student of government, not a veritable master in the science. This audio file was created by Payoprita Basic, you can download it at payoprita.com.